Kali Linux comes pre-installed with a bunch of tools, from information gathering to password attacks, from reverse engineering to forensics tools. But what do these tools actually do and what are they used for? In this video, I want to look specifically at vulnerability analysis tools. I'm going to briefly explain what each of these tools actually does and give a short example. I hope you managed to learn something here. Do remember to subscribe and hit that notification bell if you want to be the first in line to watch new videos in this series as they're released. But before we get to the video, I need to tell you about this very special USB stick. This is a Malduino, a bad USB. He's designed to run any script on a computer in a matter of seconds. By simply plugging him in, you can download and execute a file, change someone's desktop wallpaper. Anything is possible with Malduino. If you want to learn more, see the first link in the description. And stick around to the end, as I'll be doing a little giveaway. First on the list, Golismero is a security testing framework, specifically geared towards web security. It's primarily written in Python, so it'll run on Windows and Mac too. The idea being it scans a target. In this case, a target is a host running a web server using a bunch of plugins. You can view these with Golismero plugins. Some of these are actually just other tools on this list. Now, these plugins, when aggregated together, can carry out tasks that save a pen tester time during a security audit. You can, of course, download more of these online or even write your own plugin. For example, the Heartbleed plugin will test to see if a web server is vulnerable to the infamous Heartbleed vulnerability. So let's run a simple scan. Let's test my site, maltronics.com, for Heartbleed and let's save this as reports.html. So after it's done its thing, we can open that up. And luckily for me, this is a pretty bare report, though perhaps a little pointless to generate such a report like this for just one single vulnerability. Where Golismero really shines is when it runs a wide variety of scans with a single command. It's able to generate eye candy like this, detailing a bunch of vulnerabilities, along with providing the technical details required for pen testers to interpret that data. Next up is Linus, Linus, who knows? Either way, it's a security auditing tool for Linux, or well, Unix operating systems in general, which means it'll also run on Mac. Now, this isn't network based at all, but rather meant to run locally on a system. It'll run hundreds of individual tests, searching for installed software, and then try to determine possible configuration flaws. Pretty easily run with Linus audit system. There aren't many extra options here. Now, if we have a look, there's a bunch of what Linus calls suggestions. Almost any configuration will generate these security suggestions. They're more like ramblings of a pedant rather than critical vulnerabilities, but useful nonetheless, don't get me wrong. What we're more interested in are the warnings here. For example, incorrect permissions for file root SSH. Oof, that's, that's not great. In this case, any user has the ability to screw with my SSH keys, so I should probably, probably change that. Also, I got told off for Linus being too old, so who knows, there may be more problems here than it's alluding to. Next is Nikto. It's a web server scanner that searches for dangerous files and programs, outdated versions and bad configurations. Now, Nikto itself admits it's not a stealthy tool. It does its job in the fastest time possible, not really bothering about alerting any intrusion detection systems. So let's run a basic scan. This will run a scan of a local web server I have set up just for demonstration purposes. Then I've told Nikto not to bother with SSL because this host just doesn't use HTTPS. Nikto does take a few moments to do its thing, though if we take a look at the result, we can see first off, Nikto's identified that the server is running Apache 2.2.8, which is, which is super outdated. It looks like that was released way back in 2008, so massive red flag there. In fact, with a quick Google search, you can find a smorgasbord of security vulnerabilities relating to this version of Apache. If we look a little further, you can see it's found a directory index, test. Now, this could point to some old code, a web dev forgot to delete perhaps, which might contain something interesting we can exploit. It's fair to say Nikto did a pretty good job here, pointing out some glaring issues. Nmap is next, and it's probably the most infamous tool on this list. It's been around for a while, dating back to 1999, so whilst not quite as old as yours truly, it is admittedly much more famous, having been featured in Matrix Reloaded, Die Hard 4, and The Bourne Ultimatum. Why? Well, I guess it looks very hackery, and it easily fills the screen with a bunch of numbers when you run it. 
Nmap is the network discovery tool. It's got a monster of a manual, but this one sentence sums it up pretty well. Nmap uses raw IP packets in novel ways to determine what hosts are available on the network and what services those hosts are offering, what operating systems they are running, what type of packet filters, firewalls are in use, and dozens of other characteristics. So let's say for sake of arguments that we wanted to scan our local network, find out what OSs are running on each device, and see if they're running a web server. So we can do this command. This will tell Nmap to scan port 80 to see if it's open, as this is the port HTTP runs on. It enables OS detection, and then tells it to scan every IP in the range 192.168.1.1 through .1.254. Now, if you're confused by that last bit, I'll leave a link in the description for an explanation on subnets. And ignore this extra bit at the end, that's not related to Nmap, I just don't feel like leaking all of my Mac addresses today. So it'll take a few seconds to run, and let's take a look at these results. So we've got 192.168.1.8 running embedded Linux. It seems to have port 80 open, so if we yeet that into a browser, we can see that that's my Philips Hue light bulbs. Got a couple of them lying around. We've also got 192.168.119, which is running a metasploitable VM that I've got running in the background. So you get the idea. Nmap really is considered the foremost port scanner and fingerprinting tool. There's a ton more you can do with it, but we'd just be here all day and like likely all week. Next on the agenda, I believe this is Sparta. Now, not many of these tools we're looking at come with GUIs. Why? Well, it's easy to get carried away with designing a GUI's navigation, to go a bit overboard with the color, etc., as these slides from a DEF CON talk demonstrate. Just imagine if every hacking tool had its own GUI, how ridiculous that would be. However, this tool is GUI based and for good reason. As we saw with Nmap, the output gets messy, messy pretty quickly. If you want to run further scans, it'll get even worse. Sparta is an easy solution to this. It doesn't necessarily do much on its own, but instead uses other tools like Nmap for scanning and Hydra for brute forcing. So let's run that Nmap scan, but within Sparta on the default settings. You'll notice the list of hosts populate. We can view running services, and it'll even run a Nikto scan as we saw earlier. It'll even take a screenshot of any running web service, all neatly organized in this little app. You can of course download more plugins and customize it to your liking. And last, but definitely not least, apart from having the least catchy name on this list, Unix Prevesk Check is also a script that can run on Unix systems used for finding misconfigurations that could allow a local unprivileged user to escalate their privileges. It's pretty simple to run in that it only has two settings, standard and detailed. So let's run a standard scan with Unix Prevesk Check Standard. Now, the result is a little bit, um, how you say, uh, verbose. There isn't a summary or anything, so you'd have to manually search the results to find anything of interest. So instead, let's rerun that with grep warning tacked onto the end. This means we'll only be shown the lines with warnings attached. So what do we have here? Warning, guest user does not have password. Okay, so that's that's actually that's actually pretty bad. So that's a that's a pretty big oof. Certainly didn't create that five minutes ago, so this tool would have something to find. So I hope you enjoyed our little foray into Carly's vulnerability analysis tools. As for that giveaway mentioned in the title, all you have to do is follow me on Instagram at Jonty and comment on my latest post telling me what you do with your Malduino. I'll randomly select one lucky winner and announce it in the comments of my next video. Make sure you keep your Instagram DMs open, of course. As always, thanks for watching, stay tuned for more hacking videos, and have a good one.